Shalom, shalom, everybody. Greetings, brothers and sisters. We praise Ahaya, and we praise our Adonai Yache, and our mother Ruach Kwadoshi for this time and opportunity. We hope you all have been enjoying the lessons, the growth, the edification. We apologize for the time off and the delays. And we beseech you all to continue to pray that Ahaya prosper the work as we were working on the website and many other things and lessons and growing in the faith ourselves. For we are partakers in this affliction with you as brothers. And we hope you, brothers and sisters, Jew and Gentile, are encouraged to continue building and continue growing in the fruits of the Spirit. Yes, indeed. Today, this lesson is to get understanding on what rulership means according to the scriptures for the 144,000 under Christ. Yache. We're going to start with Psalms 103, verse 19. Psalms chapter 103, verse 19. Ahiah hath prepared his throne in the heavens. And his kingdom ruleth over all. So we see the Father. He sits on high. He is the highest of the holy ones. And his kingdom is over all. He is the ruler of everything. Let's continue to Psalms 110, verse 1 and 2. Ahia said unto my Adonim, Sit thou at my right hand until I make thy enemies thy footstool. Ahia shall send the rod of thy strength out of Zion. Rule thou in the midst of thy enemies. And we see Yache is due to rule in the midst of his enemies. And by precept, this is speaking of Yache. Can we look at Matthew 22, verse 42 to 45? Matthew 22 and 42. Saying, What think ye of Christ? Whose son is he? They say unto him, The son of David. He saith unto them, How then doeth David in spirit call him Adonai? Saying, Ahia said unto my Adonai, Sit thou at my right hand till I make thy enemies thy footstool. If David then call him Adonai, how is he his son? So we see that it was speaking of Yache that is due to rule in the midst of his enemies. The prophecies foretold that Yache shall build a temple as well and bear the glory, and he shall rule upon his throne as king and priest. Look at Zechariah chapter 6 verse 12 and 13 and then psalms 110 verse 4 please zechariah chapter 6 verse 12 and speak unto him saying thus speaketh ahia and sopawata saying behold the man whose name is the branch and he shall grow up out of his place and he shall build the temple of ahia even he shall build the temple of ahia and he shall bear the glory and shall sit and rule upon his throne. He is the one that shall rule, continue upon his throne. And he shall be a priest upon his throne. So he shall be king and priest, continue. And the council of peace shall be between them both. As Genesis 49 said, a scepter shall not depart from Yoda, nor a lawgiver from between his feet. Yacha is due to be king and priest. And this is a part of the prophecy concerning him and the oath that his father gave unto him. We look at Psalms 110 and 4. Ahia hath sworn, and will not repent. Thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. The word of Ahia testified before. And when we say word of Ahia, we're speaking of Yahweh. He is the word of Allahim. He testified before that he is king in Israel. He testified it to King David himself so that we could understand that he was always king. He always truly ruled over Israel. Let's look at Gad the Seer, chapter 7, verse 12 to 13, please. Gad the Seer, chapter 7, verse 12. Thus saith Ahiah, I am the king of Israel, and I am their portion, I am their dread, I am their fortress and might. And thou knowest that not with the sword or with the spear shall I save, and not with a man of valiance that draws his sword. For this is the portion of the heathens that stand on their might and many warriors. But thou art not like that, for I am a man of war alone, and there is no one with me. And why would you do this evil to number thy people? For that I shall smite Israel, in order that thou mayest know that I am Ahiah in the midst of the earth. 
All right. The word, which is the angel of Ahaya and son of Alahayam, is the ruler in Jacob unto the ends of the earth. And seeing as though he spoke those words unto David, now you can understand his Psalms better. And let's see what David said in Psalms 59 and 13. Consume them in wrath. Consume them that they may not be. And let them know that Alahayam ruleth in Jacob unto the ends of the earth. So we see who truly rules in Jacob, Alahayam. You have the Father up high in the heavens, the highest of the holy ones, and his son whom he committed dominion unto, Yahche, the king of Israel, the holy one of Israel, our redeemer. The prophecies show that the word would be made flesh, and he shall rule over Israel. Let's look at Micah chapter 5, verse 2, please. But thou, Bethlehem Ephrathah, though thou be little among the thousands of Yodah, Yet out of thee shall he come forth. Shall he come forth? So here's a man, continue. Unto me that is to be ruler in Israel. That man that was to come forth is to be ruler in Israel. Continue. Who going forth have been from of old, from everlasting. And there we see, according to the Spirit, this man is from everlasting. He is from before. And who is this? And look at John chapter 1 verse 1 and 2 and verse 14 because him that was from old and from everlasting he became flesh because he became man now let's look at john please john chapter 1 verse 1 in the beginning was the word and the word was with alahayim and the word was alahayim because he's one of the three continue the same within the beginning with alahayim he's from everlasting or from of old continue verse 14 and the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. So that he is that man that shall come forth and rule over Israel. Continue. And we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. So we see how Yache in the spirit, he was from of old. And in the flesh, he came into the world. That's why even the shepherd of Hermas, when we had the lessons on that, we learned about how the rock and the gate, the rock was ancient because it was from before. And the gate was new because he came in the end of the world. Let's look at uh, John chapter 20, verse 28 to 29, to see that those that believed and truly understood realized who Yache truly was. He is actually our Dono and our Alahayim. John chapter 20, verse 28. And Thomas answered and said unto him, my Adono and my Elohim. He wouldn't. I was really realized what was what is you are truly him. My Adono and my Elohim. Put his hand in his side. Right. Yeah. The same way David said, Ahaya said unto my Adono. And now Thomas realized who Yache really was. My Elohim. Because Yache is the angel that Jacob spoke of in Genesis chapter 48 about who delivered him. Because it was the angel, even the angel that came down in Exodus chapter 3 in the burning bush and spake with Moses. That was Yache, the king of Israel. That's why Moses had to take his shoes off his feet. Because when you stand before Yache in his glorious form, it's a holy place. Even Joshua, the son of Nun, stood before him in Joshua chapter 5 when it was time to go into the land of Canaan. Because Yache testified to David, I am the king of Israel. I am a man of war alone. He even testified in Daniel when he went and fighting, and he said, There was none with me, save Michael, your prince. Joshua said unto him, Thomas, because thou hast seen me, thou hast believed. Bless the day that have not seen, and yet have believed. So blessed are we. If we haven't seen, we weren't there when these things happened. But if we believe his word, because faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of Allah, but we believe this word, we are blessed to understand that Yache is Adono and Alahayim. Let's read Micah chapter 5 verse 3 please. Therefore will he give them up until the time that she which travaileth had brought forth. So we had read earlier in Micah chapter 5 verse 2 that yet out of thee shall he come forth unto me that is to be ruler in Israel. And now Micah chapter 5 verse 3 says therefore will he give them up so the children of Israel will begin destroyed until the time that she which travaileth hath brought forth. Then the remnant of his brethren shall return unto the children of Israel. The remnant, that's the 144,000. 
it was of old ordained for the children of Israel being cast off until the time of the bringing forth of the fruits of the Spirit in the true Israelites according to Spirit and Truth. Now, let's look at Revelation chapter 12, verse 2 and verse 5, please. Revelation chapter 12, verse 2. And she being with child cried, travailing in birth, and pain to be delivered. Verse 5. And she brought forth a man child, who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron. And her child was caught up unto Elohim and to his throne. So we see that that child, which is Yachi, was to rule all nations with a rod of iron, which he shall do. And he was caught up unto Elohim to his throne. We know even as David said, he's sitting at the right hand of Elohim right now. To that child belongs the first dominion. So look at Micah chapter 4, verse 8. And thou, O tower of the flock, the stronghold of the daughter of Zion, unto thee shall it come, even the first dominion. It's unto thee shall it come. So it's coming to Yahweh, even the first dominion. The kingdom shall come to the daughter of Jerusalem. So we see that Yahweh shall be ruling, and the kingdom shall come to the daughter of Jerusalem. We're getting an understanding of what this rulership really means. Is Yahweh's dominion? Ah, yeah, will, and we get to partake in his kingdom. 144,000 will partake in his kingdom. Now, Yachi. 144,000 Israelites. Thank you. Right. Yachi must rule to bring all things into subjection. The Israelites shall be servants unto him in his dominion and partake in his kingdom. Hence, the kingdom shall come to the daughter of Jerusalem, because Israel has a responsibility in the kingdom, as we shall see. Let's read 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 23 to 28, to understand what Yache is going to be doing in his dominion. I want to um, expound. Okay. Uh, 144,000 Israelites at the end of the world are going to partake. That doesn't have anything to do with the Israelites that were before the end of the world. So, I want to make sure that... They understood. Okay, thank you. First Corinthians chapter fifteen, verse twenty-three. But every man in his own order, Messiah of the first fruits. Afterward, they that are Messiahs at his coming. Then cometh the end. Now, when it says "then cometh the end," understand that this is speaking of after the thousand years of Yahweh's reign. Continue. When he shall have delivered up the kingdom to Elohim. So after he has his thousand year reign to bring all things his rejection, he shall deliver up the kingdom to Elohim. So notice the kingdom was his and he delivers it up to Elohim. Okay, continue. Even the father, when he shall have put down all rule and all authority and power, for he must reign. So he hath put all enemies under his feet. Because I have promised that he would do that. Continue. The last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. For he hath put all things under his feet. But when he saith all things are put under him, it is manifest that he expected, which did put all things under him. Now that's an interesting verse. He said, For he hath put all things under his feet. Ahiah is the one in Psalms 110 that told him, Sit down at my right hand till I make thy enemies thy footstool. Right. So is Ahiah doing it for Yahweh by Yahweh? That's why it says, but when he said all things are put under him, it is manifest that he is expected, which did put all things under him. The father has to come because he's the one that put all things under him. Continue, please. And when all things shall be subdued unto him, then shall the son also himself be subject unto him that put all things under him, that Allah may be all in all. So we see that Yahweh's rulership is to bring all rule and power and authority into subjection that the world, everything may be prepared for the Father, who is the highest, the Holy One of Holy Ones. Yahweh testified that he will rule over his people, and the prophets attest that he would be the covering, which is the head of his people. Let's look at uh, Ezekiel chapter 20, verse 33. As I live, saith Adonai Ahiah, Surely with a mighty hand, and with a stressed out arm, and with fury poured out, will I rule over you. Yache testified he's going to rule over the children of Israel. So we understand that we are to be his servants in this kingdom. And let's look at Isaiah chapter 32, verse 1 and 2, please. Behold, the king shall reign in righteousness, and princes shall rule in judgment. So you see, Yache shall be king in righteousness, and he shall have his servants. The princes ruling in judgment. 
because they shall be ministers unto the people, which is what rulers do. Even as Yahweh came to minister, we shall see that the Israelites are called to be servants unto Yahweh by ministering to the nations and teaching the nations by the instruction and covering of Adonai Yahweh. So the concept of rulership for the Israelites, it's servitude unto Yahweh by serving others, even as Yahweh came to serve the world and give himself for it. And we're going to learn about that more through the precepts. Let's read verse 2 of Isaiah 32, please. And a man shall be as a hiding place from the wind. So a man shall be the covering. This is Yache. He's going to be the covering for all. Continue. And a covert from the tempest, as rivers of water in a dry place, and as the shadow of a great rock in a weary land. Yache will be the covering of Israel, because he is their head, as he said, they shall call him Ishi. In which we do. It's even still a term to this day in the Bantu, which is actually Hebrew language. Onyisiang, the one that rules us, the one our head. Uh, let's look at Hosea chapter 2, verse 16. And it shall be at that day, saith Ahaya, that thou shalt call me Ishi, and shalt call me no more Bali. So we see, this is a part of the growth and understanding when we will realize that he is our head. Right. He is our Adonah and our Allah. This is the growth of the children of Israel when they realize the fullness of the gospel. Yache is Ishi. He is the head, the chief, the champion, the leader. That word is H376 in the Hebrew concordance. If you want to look it up. Now, he is the head of the Gentiles too because he is the head of all men that believe. When you look at 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 3, notice Yache is the head of all men. Not the Israelites are not the head of the Gentiles. This is how you understand it. Yacha is actually the ruler. It's his dominion. Continue, please. But I will have you know that the head of every man is Meshiaka. The head of every man is Meshiaka, is regardless of nation. Continue. And the head of the woman is the man. And the head of Christ is our lion. That's true. The father. Who Yacha is bringing the world into subjection for? Look at Romans 3 and 29. Is he the Elohim of the Jews only? Is he not also of the Gentiles? Yes, of the Gentiles also. So Yahweh is a done over all, and Ahaya is Alahayim over all. That's what the gospel said in the book of Ephesians. There's one Adonah, one Alahayim. Look at Romans 9, chapter 24, verse 25. Romans 9, 24. Even us, whom he hath called, not of the Jews only, but so also of the Gentiles. That's right. We're all called unto one Adonah and one Alahayim. Continue. As he saith also to Hosea, I will call them my people, which were not my people. Notice, this is not just speaking of the Jews, because we were cast off in iniquity, and we were not his people because we didn't walk in his ways. Because First John 3 and 7 to 10 tells you that the children of Allah are those that have his seed and don't sin. So we were not his people for our sins, and the Gentiles, they were not his people for their sins. But in the end, what is he doing? which were not my people, and her beloved, which was not beloved. Now we're all being brought unto Allah through faith in Yahweh Mashiach. The Israelites will know the law from Yahweh and be ministers unto the nations by Yahweh. This is the great opportunity and the blessing that the children of Israel have in the kingdom to come of Yahweh. Look at Hebrews chapter 8. Verse 10 to 11, so we can understand what that new covenant was with the children of Israel, so we can further understand what the responsibility of the Israelites are in the kingdom. Hebrews chapter 8, verse 10. For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, saith Adonai. I will put my laws into their mind and write them in their hearts, and I will be to them an Elohim, and they shall be to me a people. And they shall not teach every man his neighbor, and every man his brother, saying, no, Ahaya, for all shall know me from the least to the greatest. So you understand that the Israelites will know the law in the kingdom. That's the covenant that was made with them. Let's continue to read Romans chapter 9 verse 4 to see this responsibility that is upon the Israelites. Continue. Who are Israelites? To whom pertaineth the adoption and the glory and the covenants? And the giving of the law and the service of Elohim and the promises. And the giving of the law and the service of Elohim. 
These things pertain to the Israelites. Paul even testified very straightly, what is the profit of being a Jew? Romans chapter 3, verse 1 and 2. Romans chapter 3, verse 1. What advantage then hath the Jew? Of what profit is there of circumcision? Much every way. Chiefly because that unto them were committed the oracles of Allah. The Israelites were given the law. The Israelites are committed to do the service of Allah, to teach to be priests. And we're going to see this is the advantage of the Israelites to get the opportunity to partake in the ministering of the law and righteousness. Israel is called to minister unto the nations and not to bear rule in the way the Gentiles do. And this will help us understand that this is not going to be what we see in the world today. Yacha gave exhortation on how his kingdom is going to be even when he was on the earth. Look at Mark chapter 10, verse 42 to 45, please. Mark chapter 10, verse 42. But Yahweh called them to him and saith unto them, Ye know that they which are accounted to rule over the Gentiles exercise mastership over them, and their great ones exercise authority upon them. But so shall there not be among you. This is not how the Israelites are going to operate. Continue. But whosoever would be great among you shall be your minister. And this is the great calling of the children of Israel in Yahweh to be ministers. Because the children of Israel are the firstborn, they are called to be great, therefore they are to be ministers. Hence, rulership for Israel is to minister and serve in the kingdom. We get to partake in the yoke of Yahweh's humility. Let's uh, continue reading, please. And whosoever of you would be the chiefest shall be servant of all. So there we see, <laughs> chiefly was committed to the children of Israel, the oracles of Allah. By have been given the law, we shall be servant of all. This is the great calling in Yahweh, to partake in being a minister, to help, to walk in the fruits of the spirit of charity, because charity seeketh not after her own. Right. We get to be like Yahweh. That's right. <laughs> Bye, Yahweh. <laughs> You read verse 45. About those facts, yes, read verse 45. But even the Son of Man came not to be ministered unto, but to minister, mm -hmm. and to give his life a ransom for many. So Yahweh came to minister, so also the children of Israel will be there to minister. The laws also show the righteousness and what Yahweh is bringing in his kingdom. Let's look at Exodus chapter 22, verse 21, and then 23 and 9. Okay. Exodus 22 and 21. Thou shalt neither vex a stranger, nor oppress him. So we see this is completely different from the way the world teaches and the way the world exercises dominion. For you were strangers in the land of Egypt. Because we don't recompense evil for evil. We understand how it feels being in this world, being slaves all our lives. Right. So in the righteousness and holiness of charity, we're not going to render evil for evil and do the same thing. But Ahaya has been gracious to provide this opportunity for the children of Israel to do the right thing after having all the wrong things being done to them, to testify of the holiness of Allah. Exodus 23 and 9. Also thou shalt not oppress a stranger, so you know the heart of a stranger, seeing you were strangers in the land of Egypt. Look okay, at Exodus chapter 22, verse 22 to 24. Exodus chapter 22, verse 22. Ye shall not afflict any widow or fatherless child. If thou afflict them in any wise, and they cry at all unto me, I will surely hear their cry. Those doctrines of oppressing the nations and, you know, bearing them down and all that, that's not Ahaya's mindset. Ahaya is full of grace, loving kindness, tender mercies. He even loveth the stranger, as he's going to testify himself as we continue reading in the precepts. And my wrath shall wax hot. So it does not please him to see people being oppressed. Continue. And I will kill you with the sword, and your wives shall be widows, and your children fatherless. For admonition for those of the children of Israel, and anyone who hearkens to the doctrine of this oppressive concept, that is not of Allah and it's going to lead to one getting hurt because that is the mindset and the ways of Satan because that's how the world operates. Uh, let's look at Deuteronomy chapter 10, verse 17 to 19 to see that Ahaya, he love it all. Deuteronomy chapter 10, verse 17. For Ahaya, your Allah is Allah of Allah right. and a dono of a donos, right. a great Allah a mighty and a terrible, which regardeth not persons nor taketh reward. So it doesn't matter who we are, Jew or Gentile. 
and there's no price for our life. He doth execute the judgment of the fatherless and widow, and loveth the stranger. So we see in the scriptures, Ahaya loveth the stranger too. Right. So one can understand, Ahaya loveth all. He doesn't hate anyone just because they're not an Israelite. And giving him food and raiment. Because he provides for all. And that's the righteous spirit that he's put in his people of the Jews and of the Gentiles. And his elect of Israel shall have a perfect heart as he does in love. Can you read verse 19, please? Love ye therefore the stranger, for ye were strangers in the land of Egypt. And that lets us know that any enmity or ill will towards the Gentiles is a transgression of the law. Because we were commanded to love the stranger. So we know that those doctrines that teach that type of thing, they're against the will of Allah. I am. Rest assured, dear Gentiles, the Father loves you too, and the kingdom shall be tranquil. And those who are called of Israel will love you as themselves, as Ahiah commanded in his law for his people to do. Let's look at Leviticus chapter 19, verse 18. Thou shalt not avenge, nor bear any grudge against the children of thy people. Now, this is an interesting law. Because we shall not avenge, that's why we're not going to render evil for evil. The kingdom is not going to be how we will oppress in this world. Nor bear any grudge against the children of thy people. Now the Gentiles that believe in Yahche, you become the children of Abraham by faith, according to Galatians chapter 3. So know that that grudge also pertains to you as well. So the Israelites are not to grudge against the children of his people. Continue. But thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. I am Ahaya. This is the law that the true Israelites and all that believe in Ahaya, Allah have been commanded. Because this is one of the two of the greatest commandments. Right. Now, Gentiles, if you didn't understand, now you shall understand through the scriptures that you are neighbors too by faith. Let's look at Ephesians chapter 2, verse 18 to 20. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 18. For through him we both have access by one spirit unto the Father. Through Yahche, that is. Now, therefore, ye are no more strangers and foreigners. So now you're no more strangers and foreigners, your neighbors. <laughs> but fellow citizens with the saints. That's right. And of the household of Alahayim. Now you are the people of Alahayim, too. Remember, he said, I should call them my people that were not my people. Right. And I should call her beloved that was not beloved. Now you've been grafted in. You're a part of the household. You're family members. You're not going to be treated the way you've seen us treated, and possibly you've been treated as well in this world, because this world is evil. Right. It's going to be a peaceful, tranquil kingdom in the time of Yahche's rule. Verse 20, and are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Yahche Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. He is the cornerstone of the whole house, fitly framed together, for we are many members, but it's one chief cornerstone, one head. One Adana over all, Yache Mishiaka, gathering us all together by one spirit to have access unto the Father. The deliverance of Israel was prophesied by the Holy Spirit that they shall be delivered to serve Allah without fear all the days of their life. This is the heart and mindset of the righteous. We desire just to serve Adana Yache and Ahaya Awa Allah Let's look at Luke chapter 1, verse 67 and 68. Please, Luke chapter 1, verse 67. And his father, Zacharias, was filled with the Holy Spirit. So this is the Holy Spirit's words. Okay, so we're going to understand how the people that have the Holy Spirit view the salvation and deliverance that's to come. And prophesy, saying, Blessed be Ahaya Alahayama Israela, for he hath visited and redeemed his people. Let's jump to 69 to 71, and then verse 74 and 75, please. Okay. And have raised up an horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant, Duated, as he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began. Verse 71, that we should be saved from our enemies and from the land of all that hate us. Verse 74, that he would grant unto us that we being delivered out of the hand of our enemies. What are we being granted to do? Might serve him without fear. The whole deliverance is to serve him without fear. That's what we want, to be free to serve our Adonah and our Alahayam, and our Father, the Adonah of Adonahs, and Alahayam of Alahayams, Ahaya, Ashere, Ahaya. In holiness and righteousness before Him all the days of our life. That's what the righteous desire. That's what those of the Holy Spirit desire. 
And that's even the mindset of the Gentiles, not just the Israelites. Because we're all going to be serving one Adonah and one Allah I am and Father of all. Let's look at Luke chapter 20, verse 30 to 32. Uh, Luke chapter 2, chapter two verse 30. Sorry. It's okay. Uh, sorry. For my eyes have seen thy salvation. Because Simeon had Yache in his hand. Salvation is a man. So concerning the question of what is salvation, salvation is that man, Yache, the mediator between man and Allah I am. Which thou has prepared before the face of all people, a light to lighten the Gentiles. He's lightening the Gentiles, and he will be enlightening them through his ministers, his servants, the children of Israel in the kingdom. And the glory of thy people, Israel. The Gentiles will be believers too, so all things will be done in righteousness, since they are also serving the same master as we do. Let's look at 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 1 and 2, please. 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 1. Let as many servants as are under the yoke count their own masters worthy of all honor. Now that's wonderful, under the yoke. The scripture in Matthew chapter 11, verse 28 to 30, tells about Yache's yoke, the yoke of meekness. He said, I am meek and lowly of heart. We're all under the yoke. Now, putting it in context, we the Israelites, we are servants unto Yache. So our master, we count him worthy of all honor. That's right. And in the kingdom, the Gentiles are going to be subject to the Israelites. So they are also going to count them worthy of honor, doing service unto them, which is truly doing service unto Yache, because he is their done of all. Let the name of Elohim and his doctrine be not blasphemed. So we see how when we all operate in righteousness in the yoke of Yache, doing all things in meekness and humility, Elohim's doctrine is not blasphemed. Continue. And they that have believing masters, let them not despise them, because they are brethren. See, there's no envy, and this is how you can understand this time of the Gentiles being subject to the Israelites is not looking at it like going to be dominating somebody. Continue. But rather do them service, because they are faithful and beloved, partakers of the benefit. So we see all partaking of the benefit together. Go on. These things teach and exhort. And this is what Ahaya said to teach and exhort. This is the righteousness of Alahayim. We are brethren by faith in Yache, Jew and Gentile. So there's no way it's going to be an oppressive environment. That would go against the commandment to love thy brother as thyself. Because if we're making our servant do something that we wouldn't do, then we're breaking the commandment. Right. Let's look at Galatians chapter 3, verse 26 to 29. Galatians chapter 3, verse 26. For ye are all the children of Elohim by faith in Christ Yahche. So we see how the verse in Timothy talks about how we're all brethren. The time of being subject in the kingdom. Firstly, all Jew and Gentile are all subject to Yahche. And then the Israelites are going to be ministered unto their brethren by faith, which are the Gentiles, to teach them the laws of Yahche. And the Gentiles who are believers in Adonai Yache and servants unto Adonai Yache and put on his yoke of meekness and lowliness of heart are going to also serve the Israelites knowing that they are of the same belief and like faith and are their brethren as well. It's going to be complete unity in righteousness. For as many of you as have been baptized into Meshiach have put on Meshiach. And we see it's the spirit of Yache in everyone, not just the Israelites. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither bond nor free. There is neither male nor female. Neither bond nor free. So that's amazing to know that there's a scripture that says, uh, if you're called being a servant, care not for it, because you're Mishiachah's freeman. Right. So the Gentiles, they're not going to be caring about they're going to be in servitude, because they know they're going to be Mishiachah's freeman. Right. This is good. Now we get to know the mindset of a righteous Gentile. Ahaya showed us the mindset of a righteous Israelite by the Spirit. And the scriptures also show what a righteous Gentile will look at this opportunity in the kingdom to be like. This opportunity to be free in Yahche, to do the things that please him. There is neither male nor female, for you are all one in Yahche, Meshiach. 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 21. Art thou called being a servant? Care not for it. But if thou mayest be made free, use it rather. For he that is called in Adonah, being a servant, is Adonah's freedman. 
Likewise, also he that is called being free is Mishiach's servant. So you can see how the Israelites, we are going to be free from the bondage that we've been in to serve Yahweh, because he's the one that's going to redeem us, as the prophecy said. We're going to be Mishiach's servant, right? Because <laughs> we're free. And then the Gentiles that are called, that believe in Yahweh, those are going to be Mishiach's freemen. It's amazing because we're all being set free. He even says in verse 23, Ye are bought with a price. Be not ye the servant of men. Understand, everything we do, we do unto Adana. Right. That's the spirit of love. So you can see the mindset isn't looking at the carnal things, but looking unto Adana. That was Colossians chapter 3, verse 17. Whatsoever ye do in word or deed, do all in the name of Adana Yache giving thanks to Allah Hayyam and the Father by him. So we see the mindset of the people that will be partaking in the kingdom of Yahche. Galatians chapter 3, verse 29. All right. And if ye be Messiahs, then ye are Abraham's seed, and heirs according to the promise. And we're all heirs in Yahche's kingdom to partake in it. And we all have a position to play. The Israelites have to minister in the name of Yahche, being Mishiach's servant. And the Gentiles also have to minister and be servants in Mishiach's kingdom by Mishiach. It's all one. Israel's kingdom is in righteousness, equity, and peace, not oppression. Because the king is reigning in righteousness, so the whole kingdom is going to be in righteousness. Can you read Isaiah chapter 14, verse 1 to 3, please? Isaiah chapter 14, verse 1. For Ahiah will have mercy on Jacob, and will yet choose Israel, and set them in their own land. And the strangers shall be joined with them, and they shall cleave to the house of Jacob. And the people shall take them, and bring them to their place. And the house of Israel shall possess them in the land of Ahiah for servants and handmaids. So we see how the Gentiles are going to be serving the Israelites, because those that are called being servants are Dono's freedmen, so, okay? And they shall take them captives, whose captives they were, and they shall rule over their oppressors. And this is wonderful to see how Ahia is magnifying his mercy and righteousness over all, because the Israelites shall rule over their oppressors and show them the love of Allah and righteousness for a testimony unto Ahia through Yache, because they will not render evil for evil, but will walk in charity, teaching the nations how to serve Allah through their words and their deeds. Because we even just read in Colossians 3 and 17 how everything we do in word and deed, do it unto Adonai Yache, giving thanks unto Allah Verse 3, please. And it shall come to pass in the day that Ahia shall give thee rest from thy sorrow, and from thy fear, and from the hard bondage wherein thou wast made to serve. That's the promise to the children of Israel, that we being redeemed, saved from the hands of our enemies, may be able to serve him without fear all the days of our life. The Israelites are going to be delivered from their bondage, and they are not going to treat anyone the way they were treated, because now they understand the spirit of love. The Gentiles shall not have hard bondage like we did, which shows the righteousness of Yahweh's rulership and his righteousness in the Israelites who will walk in the light of his love. Let's look at our second Baruch chapter 72, verse 2 through 5, please. Second Baruch chapter 72, verse 2. After the signs have come, of which ye were told before, when the nations become turbulent, and the time of my Messiah is come, he shall both summon all the nations, and some of them he shall spare, and some of them he shall slay. So at the end of this world, after Yahweh comes, he's going to literally summon all the nations before him, and some of them are going to die, and some of them are going to be spared. Continue. These things, therefore, shall come upon the nations which are to be spared by him. So we're going to learn what's going to happen. Every nation which knows not Israel and has not trodden down the seed of Yaakov shall indeed be spared. So we see those who have not destroyed the Israelites and have not known them and afflicted them, they shall be spared. Okay? And this because some out of every nation shall be subjected to your people. And you see how some out of every nation shall be subjected to the people of Israel. 
That's how we know that not all the Gentiles are going to perish. The Gentiles are very much going to be in the kingdom. And this helps us also understand why the children of Israel are going to have to be ministered unto the nations and teaching them the law. Right. Because not everyone that is in the kingdom actually knew the laws and the commandments and actually believed the testimony of Yahche. Right. There are going to be Gentiles who believed beforehand and learned much of the faith, and much of the righteousness. And they're going to get a greater glory. That's right. And then there are going to be those of the Gentiles who didn't know anything but were spared because they didn't destroy the children of Israel. They are going to take some extra ministering on too. Can you please read Amos chapter 9, verse 11 and 12, please? Sure. Amos chapter 9 and 11. In that day will I raise up the tabernacle of David that is fallen, and close up the breaches thereof. And I will raise up his ruins, and I will build it as in the days of old, that they may possess the remnant of Edom. So there we see, not every Edomite is going to perish. And of all the heathen which are called by my name. And we see that Yache also has heathen that are called by his name, so that we know there are Gentiles that are going to believe. Not all Gentiles will abide in unbelief. And on, according to the scriptures, not all Gentiles have known and trodden down the children of Israel. Because those that have not trodden down and have not known Israel will be spared in the end. The Israelites will operate in the fruits of the Spirit with the nations according to the prophecies. So let's look at Isaiah chapter 61, verse 3 to 6, please. Isaiah chapter 61, verse 3. To appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, to give unto them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. So we see how we're no longer going to be mourning, but rejoicing in the Holy Spirit. That they might be called trees of righteousness. There we see we will be abounding in the fruits. Notice we're going to be called trees of righteousness. So the children of Israel through Yahche and operating in the fruits of the Spirit will be called the trees of righteousness because that covenant was to give Israel the law in their hearts and in their minds. Every Israelite is going to understand righteousness in the kingdom. Continue. The planting of Ahiah. That he might be glorified. And we're going to know exactly who did it. Right. <laughs> it's Ahaya who planted his righteous seed in us. That he may be glorified. That's why Yahweh is our rejoicing. And Ahaya said in Jeremiah chapter 9, verse 23 and 24, Him that glory, glory, and that he knoweth him. That's our rejoicing, knowing that all things are of Ahaya and his son Yahweh. Continue. And they shall build the old waste. Mm -hmm. And they shall raise up the former desolations. And they shall repair the waste cities the desolation of many generations. Mm -hmm. And strangers shall stand and feed your flocks. The Israelites are not going to be in that hard labor anymore. Now is being reversed that others will be doing the work. And the sons of the aliens shall be your plowmen and your vine dressers. But ye shall be named the priest of Ahia. That lets you know we're going to be ministers. Because <laughs> you have to be working the fruits of the Spirit and keeping the law to be a priest in the first place. And to be known as priests lets you know you're ministering unto all the people. So yes, the Gentiles are going to be doing the work. The Israelites are also going to be working as well, teaching them righteousness and guiding them by the spirit of Yahweh and the admonitions and counsel of Yahweh because he is king and priest that shall be given the instruction. Men shall call you the ministers of Elohim. It's very straightly what the scriptures say. Right. This is what is to come for those 144,000. This is what the Israelites are going to be doing in the kingdom, ministering. Continue. Ye shall eat the riches of the Gentiles, and in their glory shall ye boast yourselves. Israel will minister unto the people, teaching them the laws and judgments, because to them were committed the oracles of Elohim and the service of Elohim. Yahweh the king and Adonu ministers unto the sons of men, and his servants shall do the same. Look at John chapter 13. Verse 13 to 17, please. John chapter 13, verse 13. You call me master and adono, and you say, well, for so I am. If I then, your adono and master, have washed your feet, ye also ought to wash one another's feet. Those Israelites who have Gentiles that are subject unto them, they are going to also minister unto them, even as Adonai Yache came to minister, as Yache is testifying up here. For I have given you an example that ye should do as I have done to you. Verily, verily, I say unto you, 
The servant is no greater than his adonor, neither he that is sent greater than he that sent him. If you know these things, happy are ye if you do them. So you see the righteous joy that the 144,000 is going to have to be servants. Servants unto Mishiaka, because he that is called being free is Mishiaka, servant, as 1 Corinthians 7 said, and then servants unto the nations, because Yahweh said he is chief, shall be servant of all. So you see the mindset of the 144,000 and what opportunity awaits for them. The Israelites' duty and privilege in the kingdom is to be ministers and servants of Allah Hayyam. Let's look at Luke chapter 17 verse 10, please. So likewise ye, when ye shall have done all those things which are commanded you, say, we are unprofitable servants. We have done that which was our duty to do. And that's the mindset also of the righteous 144,000 right. and of all righteous servants because there's no pride in it. It's just simply do what our master commanded us to do and we just continue forward. That's the humility, the meekness of it. Continue rejoicing in Yache, praise the Yache, praise the Holy Spirit, praise Ahaya for what they're doing. Let's continue to move forward. His servants seek humble positions, not to be exalted, even as he chose humility instead of exalting himself. So now this is good to understand how the Israelites' mindset shall be, and also the Gentiles. Because the Gentiles are not going to care for their servitude because they are Mishiach's servant as well. Matthew chapter 23, verse 8 to 12. Matthew chapter 23, verse 8. But be not ye called rabbi, for one is your master, even Christ, and all ye are brethren. And call no man your father upon the earth, for one is your father which is in heaven. Neither be ye called masters, for one is your master, even Christ. But he that is the greatest among you shall be your servant. That's right. That's when the Israelites have that responsibility. They're going to be the servants, serving all. And whosoever shall exalt himself shall be abased. That doctrine of seeking to lift the Israelites up, lift ourselves up, is going to get us destroyed. Right. And he that shall humble himself shall be exalted. But the doctrine of seeking to be servants unto Mashiach and putting on that yoke of humility and humbling oneself, looking forward to the opportunity to minister unto the nations and serve Allah is going to get one exalted. That's right. The Israelites will have the mind of Mashiach. He was an example of how being a servant leads to the glory of Allah Hayyam. Look at Philippians chapter 2, verse 4 to 11. Philippians chapter 2, verse 4. Look not every man on his own things, but look every man also on the things of others. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Mashiach Yache. That's the mind for all, Jew and Gentile. Continue. Who being in the form of Allah Hayyam, thought it not robbery to be equal with Allah Hayyam, but made himself of no reputation, and took upon him the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of men. And being found in the fashion as a man, he humbled himself, and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore Allah also have highly exalted him, and given him a name which is above every name. So we see how in humbling ourselves, and coming as a servant, and doing the works of a servant and minister, would lead to being exalted, and being worthy of the calling of Allah Hayyam. The Israelites shall be judges to minister unto the people, to learn the law, and the statutes and the judgments, from Yahche. Look at Micah chapter 4, verse 1 to 4. Micah chapter 4, verse 1. But in the last days it shall come to pass that the mountain of the house of Ahiah shall be established in the top of the mountains, and it shall be exalted above the hills, and people shall flow unto it. And many nations shall come and say, Come, let us go up to the mountain of Ahiah, and to the house of Elohim of Jacob, and he will teach us of his ways, and we will walk in his paths. For the law shall go forth of Zion, and the word of Ahiah from Jerusalem. So you see how the nations will be coming to get more understanding of the law, while Israel will know the law, as the prophecy said in Hebrews 8, verse 10 to 11. So they will be ministering unto the nations, as Romans chapter 9, verse 4 said, that the service of Allah belonged unto them. This shows it is they that are appointed to the service of Allah to be teaching the nations when they come up to learn of the ways of Allah Can you read Isaiah chapter 61 verse 6 again, please? Sure. But ye shall be named the priest of Ahiah, 
Men shall call you the ministers of our Elohim. You probably missed something right there. Please go to it. It said, Men shall call you the ministers of our Elohim. Edify, my brother. There you go. <laughs> so you can see that the, the Elohim of Yaakov is the same Elohim for the seed of Abraham by faith. And you can see we're all one, we're all brethren, because we all serve the same Elohim. Ah, uh, because they said our Elohim. <laughs> so the minister of our Elohim, not the minister of Elohim. Mm. All are going to believe Ahaya Elohim be magnified. And can you read First Peter two and five, please? First Peter chapter two verse five. Ye also, as lively stones, are built up in spiritual house. Now this Peter, we know Peter was speaking to the Israelites. You are a lively stones built up a spiritual house and holy priesthood. So we see that priesthood is being prepared even now. That's why the children of Israel, the firstborn, the rod is hard on them to learn the law and the fruits of the Spirit, because their duty is to minister in the kingdom. And that covenant is going to be fulfilled by the end. The children of Israel shall bud forth in righteousness. To offer up spiritual sacrifices, acceptable to Elohim by Yahweh Meshiach. This is also why the mindset of the righteous desire to simply serve Elohim all the days of their lives, because it is the mindset of Mishiach. Can you read 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 16, please? For who hath known the mind of Ahaya, that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Mishiach. So we might not know everything Ahaya has in his own mind, but at least Ahaya has been gracious to give us the mind of Mishiach, which is meekness, humility, coming to serve, to minister, that's the mindset of Mashiach. Matter of fact, can you read Matthew eleven twenty eight to 30, please? Matthew chapter 11, verse 28. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. This is the calling. In the kingdom, the royal law shall stand, and there shall be peace among all. No oppression. Can you read Micah chapter 3, verse 3 to 4, and then Baruch? We're going to go to Baruch after that. Uh, Micah chapter 4, verse 3 to 4. Man, I, I'm sorry, man. Micah chapter 4, verse 3. And ye shall judge among many people, and rebuke strong nations afar off. And they shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. So this is what Yahshua is coming to do. He shall judge among these nations and destroy all their weapons. Nations shall not lift up a sword against nations. So there is no, no, not going to be race war anymore. Neither shall they learn war anymore. But they shall sit every man under his vine and under his fig tree. And none shall make them afraid. For the mouth of Ahaya, Unsobawata has spoken it. The Israelites are not going to be afraid anymore. They're not going to be oppressed. And the Gentiles, now that we're all serving the same Allah Hayam, it's going to be peace for everyone. Right. Let's substantiate that according to Scripture, because that in Micah was speaking of how the Israelites are not going to be oppressed and not going to be afraid. And we're going to look and see in Second Baruch chapter 73, verse 1 to 4. And chapter 74, verse 1 to 2, that this peace and tranquility will be for all, not just the Israelites alone. Uh, fun fact, um, it, also, <laughs> it also explains why there's no peace amongst the nations. Because when you serve, when, uh, when people are serving different Elohims, you can't be at peace. So amongst the Israelite groups, they can't come to peaceful terms because they're all serving different Elohims. Right. And amongst the whole world, nobody can come to terms because everybody is serving their own Elohim. So, yeah. Second Baruch, chapter 73, verse 1 to 4, and chapter 74, verse 1 and 2. Okay. Second Baruch, chapter 73, verse 1. And it shall come to pass when he hath brought low everything that is in the world and has sat down in peace for the age on the throne of his kingdom. See, this is Yahweh sitting down for peace in the age of his kingdom, that thousand year reign. That joy shall then be revealed and rest shall appear. Mm -hmm. And then shall descend and do, and disease shall withdraw. So there's not going to be sickness. 
and anxiety and anguish and lamentation passed from amongst men. From amongst men, so it's not just the Israelites. Continue. And gladness proceed through the whole earth. Through the whole earth, so it's not just going to be in the land of Israel. It will be peace for everyone. Continue. And no one shall again die untimely, nor shall any adversity suddenly befall. And judgment and revelings and contentions and revenges and blood and passions and envy and hatred and whatsoever things are like these shall go into condemnation when they are removed. All those evil spirits are going to be cast into condemnation. So when you see that it's evil spirits that's causing all these things today. Right. All the divisions as brothers, I had brother Zakwa mention. And you can corroborate that through the Testament of Solomon because there was peace in his days because he bound up all the evil spirits. Yep. Yep. And it shall come to pass in those days that the reapers shall not grow weary, nor those that build be toil worn. So you see, the scriptures said that there would be strangers would be the vine dressers and whatnot. And we see in the scriptures it's not going to be some toil, some labor. Right. They're gonna matter of fact, can you read that verse again, please? Sure, seventy four. It shall come to pass in those days that the reapers shall not grow weary, nor those that build toil worn. Now we're going to check back to Isaiah 61, verse 5, and it says, And strangers shall stand and feed your flocks, and the sons of the aliens shall be your plowmen and your vine dressers. So when you see, by precept, what's in Baruch with Gentiles is not going to be some oppressive environment. All right. It's the spirit of Allah that's going to be in everybody prospering all the work. And we go back to uh, 2 Baruch chapter 73 there. And whatever, whichever verse you are at. Uh, I'll read 74 again. Oh, that was 74. No, it's, uh, yeah, it's 74. Oh, I'm sorry. 74 and 1. Okay. And it shall come to pass in those days that the reapers shall not grow weary, nor those that build be toil worn. For the work shall of themselves speedily advance together right. with those who do them in much tranquility. Much tranquility. It's going to be peace. It's going to be easy. Because Yache is there and he's with everyone. And it's going to be Yache prospering. You're going to be stronger than ever. <laughs> <laughs> putting, throwing bricks, like, putting it together real fast. The angel is going to be helping you. It's gonna be, oh, it's going to be wonderful. It's going to be wonderful. <laughs> For that time is the consummation of that which is corruptible, and the beginning of that which is not corruptible. This is the time of Yache building up to the incorruptible time. This is going to be a wonderful time of peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. Now you understand that rulership is truly servitude unto Yache by serving the nations as their ministers to learn of him. That's the true concept of rulership to come for the 144,000. And now we understand also that servitude as Mishiach's freedman is the servitude of the Gentiles as well. So you can see the mindset of everybody just operating in humility of spirit as brethren, knowing that we're all serving the same Allah Hayyam, and we're doing all things unto our Allah Hayyam together. And our Adonai Yahache. Let's look at Second Timothy chapter two verse twelve. Second Timothy chapter two verse twelve. If we suffer, we shall also reign with him. Notice it said, "If we suffer, we shall also reign with him." So the Israelites understand it's Israel reigning with him, because right. Yahache is king and it's his rulership and it's his dominion. If we deny him, if we don't put on his fruits and his law and bear his name, the true name Yahche, he also would deny us. This is the truth of the gospel. He said, Many shall come in that day saying, I don't know, I don't know, have we not done wonderful works in thy name and cast out devils? And he shall profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye workers of iniquity. So, children of Israel, this is a great calling. And also you that fear Allah I am of the Gentiles, this is a great calling to cleave unto his name while he is near. Let's also look at Romans chapter 8, verse 17. And if children, then heirs, heirs of Allah I am, and joint heirs with Messiah. Notice, even being heirs for Jew and Gentile, it's with Mishiach Yache. Understand, it's about Yache. The rulership belongs to Yache. The glory belongs to Yache. The world was created for Yache. Right. 
Hey, yeah, Jay created a world for the church. And That's you're partaking in it. <laughs> we just, it's all about Yache. <laughs> it's just all about Yache. Continue. If so be that we suffer with him, that we may be also glorified together. So that's how we partake in his glory, to suffer with him, be a living sacrifice, keep the law and bear the fruits of his spirit. Daniel chapter 7, verse 27, please. And the kingdom and dominion and the greatness of the kingdom under the whole heaven. So context, this is at the end. After the fourth beast, all the dominions of the world, when Yahweh comes and destroys all their dominions, continue. And the kingdom and dominion and the greatness of the kingdom under the whole heaven shall be given to the people of the saints of the Most High. The kingdom and dominion shall be given to the people because Yahweh is king and the kingdom shall come to the daughter of Jerusalem or the daughter of Zion. And we understand what that means for the children of Israel to have the opportunity to minister unto the world, even as Yahweh the king came to minister. Whose kingdom is an everlasting kingdom. And all dominion shall serve and obey him. And that substantiates that even though the kingdom comes unto the people of the saints of the Most High, they're actually going to be serving and obeying him. As the scripture said, and all dominion shall serve and obey him. Revelation chapter 20 verse 4. And I saw thrones, and they sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Yahweh and for the word of Elohim, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands. And what did they receive for all this? Because they said, if we suffer with him, we shall reign with him, right? Let's see what it says after that. And they lived and reigned with Meshiach a thousand years. With Meshiach. They lived and reigned with Mishiach a thousand years right. is partaking in his reign is with him being servants unto him and ministering through him and for him unto the nations that's right let's continue let's look at Matthew 19 and 28 to see even what he told his disciples and Yahshua said unto them verily I say unto you that ye which have followed me in the regeneration when the Son of Man shall sit in the throne of his glory, ye also shall sit upon twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. Now, even the apostles, they're going to sit on twelve thrones, but they're partaking in Yahweh's glory. Right. Let's substantiate that Yahweh has the authority to give it to them, and they're partaking in what belongs to him. In Luke chapter 22, Ye are they which have continued with me in my temptations. And I appoint unto you a kingdom, as my Father has appointed unto me. You see who has authority? Yahweh. He's the one that appoints unto us a kingdom. Continue. That ye may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom. Eat and drink at his table in his kingdom. Right. <laughs> so we understand who the kingdom really belongs to here. It keeps us in a humble place to understand this is Yahweh's kingdom. This is his table. This is his dominion. This is his glory. And sit on thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. Well, that's speaking to his apostles there, specifically in that respect right there. Let's look at Ephesians chapter 5, verse 5, please. For this ye know, that no whoremonger, no unclean person, no covetous man, who is an idolater, hath an inheritance in the kingdom of Messiah and of Elohim. So we see how there's two kingdoms to come. The first dominion is to Yahweh, that's a thousand year reign, and the kingdom of Elohim. That's eternity. Second right. Peter chapter 1, verse 11, please. For so an entrance shall be ministered unto you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Donor and Savior, Yahweh Meshiach. So we see who this kingdom belongs to. Now, it's his kingdom. He has the authority to grant to his people to sit with him. We look at Revelation chapter 3, verse 21. To him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne. He is the one that's given the authority to sit with him. We have the opportunity to be his servants in his kingdom. Even as I also overcame, and am sent down with my father in his throne. So you see how he does everything that he's seen the father do. Hence, he's given the same opportunity that the father gave him. Those that are his servants in Israel shall be blessed. Look at Isaiah chapter 65, verse 8 to 21 and verse 25. Isaiah chapter 65, verse 8. Thus saith Ahiah, as the new wine is found in cluster, and one saith, destroy it not, 
for a blessing is in it. So will I do for my servant's sakes. That's the children of Israel. That cluster, that remnant of blessings in it. Don't destroy it. Okay. That 144,000. Tie back to where we started. Okay. Continue. That I may not destroy them all. And I will bring forth a seed out of Jacob. <laughs> And out of Judah, an inheritor of my mountains. Who is that inheritor? That's Yahche. Continue. And mine elect shall inherit it, and my servants shall dwell there. You see where his servants are going to be? He said his servants, notice they're going to be serving unto him. Continue. And Sharon shall be a fold of flocks. In the valley of Achor, a place for the herds to lie down in. For my people that have sought me. It's not all Israel is going to be there in peace because sadly, the unbelievers of Israel are going to die. Right. But those that had believed and have sought him and followed after him and partook in his suffering, they're going to be his servants in peace and tranquility in his kingdom. But ye are they that forsake Ahia, that forget my holy mountain. Sadly, this is now speaking of the unbelieving Israelites. That prepare a table for that troop. That word troop is where the word God comes from. That's the Babylonian deity. And that furnish the drink offering unto that number. Therefore will I never you to the sword. Sadly, even calling on idols like that deity is why we're being numbered to the sword and destroyed. And ye shall all bow down to the slaughter. Because when I called, ye did not answer. When I spake, ye did not hear. But did evil before my eyes, and did choose that wherein I delighted not. So, Therefore thus saith Adonai Ahaya, Behold, my servants shall eat, but ye shall be hungry. Behold, my servants shall drink, but ye shall be thirsty. Behold, my servants shall rejoice, but ye shall be ashamed. Behold, my servants shall sing with joy of heart, but ye shall cry for sorrow of heart, and shall howl for vexation of spirit. And you shall leave your name for a curse unto my chosen. For Adonai Ahiah shall slay thee, and call his servants by another name. The children of Israel that did not put on the yoke of Mishiach to be humble and meek and be servants are going to be slain. And his servants are going to be called by another name. Continue. That he who blesseth himself in the earth shall bless himself in Elohim of truth. And he that sweareth in the earth shall swear by the Elohim of truth. Because the former troubles are forgotten, and because they are hid from my eyes. For behold, I create new heavens and a new earth. And the former shall not be remembered, nor come into mind. But be ye glad and rejoice forever in that which I create. For behold, I create Jerusalem. A rejoicing in her people a joy, and I will rejoice in Jerusalem, and joy in my people. And the voice of weeping shall be no more heard in her, nor the voice of crying. It was interesting that he said it shall be called by a new name, and then in the New Testament they call us Christians. Wow. It's interesting what I is doing. There shall be no more thence an infant of days. No an old man that hath not fulfilled his days. They're speaking in Yahweh's kingdom now. People living their full life and everything. For the child shall die a hundred years old. But the sinner being a hundred years old shall be accursed. And they shall build houses and inhabit them. And they shall plant vineyards and eat the fruit of them. Can you read Second Samuel chapter 22 verse 3? Second Samuel chapter 23 verse 3. Did I say 22 verse 3? Yeah. Man, the Elohim of Israel said, The rock of Israel spake to me. He that ruleth over men must be just. Who was it that spoke to him? The rock of Israel spake to me. That's Yahweh telling the, the, way, the, the king how one is supposed to rule. We went to this verse to understand how those Israelites that will be given power over the nations as ministers of Elohim to teach the nations to understand that authority that they've been given over the nations, there's a way for it to be done. We've read how it's going to be in ministering and serving them, and also we get understanding how one is supposed to do it. Please. He that ruleth over men must be just, so, ruling in the fear of Allah. And he has to be in the fear of Allah and walking in all the fruits of the Spirit. Can you read Colossians chapter 4, verse 1? Master, given to your servants. That which is just and equal. So we see how the Spirit had Paul teaching the things that David were being taught in the Old Testament. Continue. 
knowing that ye also have a master in heaven. Let's read Colossians chapter 3, verse 22 to 25. Colossians chapter 3, verse 22. Servants, obey in all things your masters according to the flesh, not with eye service as men pleasers, but in singleness of heart, fear in Allah Hayyam. So we see how the rulers have to rule in the fear of Allah Hayyam, and also the servants have to serve in the fear of Allah Hayyam. These laws, these fruits of the Spirit, all these admonitions, even of the gospel, is actually a preparation for the kingdom to do all things in righteousness as is going to be in the kingdom. Hence, we have to get it together now because these are all commandments. And whatsoever you do, do it heartily as to Ahaya and not unto men, knowing that of Ahaya you shall receive the reward of the inheritance, for ye serve Adonai Christ. But he that doeth wrong shall receive for the wrong which he hath done, and there is no respect of persons. Let's read 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 1 to 6, because this is important in closing to encompass the whole thing and understand. 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 1. Let as many servants as are under the yoke count their own masters worthy of all honor. Now touching it again, we're all servants under the yoke. We're all under the yoke of Yahje, as Matthew chapter 11, verse 20 to 30 said, the yoke is meekness and being lowly of heart. And we all count our master Yahje worthy of all honor. And now to the next level, the Israelites are going to be servants unto Yahje, counting him worthy of all honor doing all things in meekness and ministering unto the nations as his ministers and the ministers of our Allah Hayyam, because the Gentiles are going to be serving Allah Hayyam as well. And then the Gentiles are going to be counting their master Yahche worthy of all honor and giving respect unto the Israelites as well, because they are also brethren. Let the name of Allah Hayyam and his doctrine be not blasphemed. And they that have believing masters, let them not despise them, because they are brethren. See, the Gentiles won't hate the Israelites that are their masters because they are brethren. But rather do them service because they are faithful and beloved partakers of the benefit. The Gentiles will know that, hey, these are brothers too because they've been faithful unto Yahche and they are also partaking in the benefit of Yahche. This is what we were commanded to teach and exhort and this is what we teach and exhort. Now we're going to see if anyone is of the contrary mindset, what the scriptures say. If any man teach otherwise, and consent not to the wholesome words, even the words of our Adonai Yachim Christ, and to the doctrine which is according to holiness, he is proud, knowing nothing, but doting about questions and strife of words, whereof cometh envy, strife railings, evil surmisings, so, perverse disputings of men of corrupt minds, and destitute of the truth. Sadly, and there will be those that do such things are destitute of truth because they don't have the fruits of the Spirit. Supposing that gain is holiness, from such withdraw thyself. And when you see it, you separate yourself from them. This is what we're commanded to do. Now, verse 6, please. But holiness with contentment is great gain. And this verse is very key because being content with the righteousness of minister unto the world for the 144,000 through Yache and by Yache is great gain. And also for the Gentiles, being content to be Yache's freedman serving in the fear of Allah Hayyam, walking in the fruits of the Spirit with your brothers and your sisters in the faith of Yahche. It's a mind of contentment. That's great gain. In closing, the scriptures affirm who shall truly rule over the nations. Let's look at Wisdom of Solomon chapter 3, verse 5 to 9. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 3, verse 5. And having been a little chastened, they shall be greatly rewarded. This is speaking of the children of Israel. For Allah Hayyam proved them and found them worthy for himself. As gold in the furnace hath he tried them and received them as a burnt offering. And in the time of their visitation they shall shine and run to and fro like sparks among the stubble. They shall judge the nations and have dominion over the people. Now we said this was speaking of the Israelites. It says they shall judge the nations and have dominion over the people. We understand what that meant. They shall be ministers unto the people, right. teaching the people. Because when it says judge the people, you have to teach them righteousness. You have to judge between the right and wrong. Teach them the law. Even as the 70 judges were given the Holy Spirit in the days of Moses. Right. What does the end of the verse say? And their Adonai shall reign forever. And their Adonai shall reign forever. That lets you know who the rulership really belongs to. Yache. He's the one that shall reign forever. 
So we understand scripture, the Israelites shall judge the nations and have dominion over the people as ministers and servants unto Yahche, and their Adonai, Yahche, shall reign forever. This is the rulership to come. Can you read verse 9, please? They that put their trust in him shall understand the truth. Those that are true believers are going to understand the calling of the elect. And such as be faithful in love shall abide with him. You see how the Holy Spirit was testifying that it took the fruits of the Spirit to abide with him. For grace and mercy is to his saints, and he hath care for his elect. So you see, this is the gospel. This is what's coming. This is the rulership that Yahweh is bringing. And that's it. Good to me. Chalam. Chalam, everybody.